MCP, zero to hero. Let's go from I know nothing to hopefully I'm a hero and I'm doing some cool stuff. Cursor supports MCP, and this is what I ultimately want. I use Cursor every day, but my AI doesn't have any access to any tools outside of what's out of the box inside of Cursor. And so I'm not going to start in Cursor, though. The number one thing people always ask me to comment on and review and show is Klein. Klein has the coolest implementation of model context protocol in my opinion because supposedly it has this awesome MCP store. So I don't have to do any configuration. I can just click buttons. I love this idea. Look at that. So if you don't have client installed, it's just a VS Code extension. It also works on cursor. And this button is the MCP servers button. This is like the app store for AI and IDEs it enables Git. Ah, uh, cool. Git doesn't sound like I need any kind of keys or anything. So here we go. This is the most seamless way to install an MCP server. Here's what's really cool, by the way. The way Clyde implemented this is like ridiculously simple. The store is just, if I remember right, a configuration of like names and GitHub. And then all it does is tell Klein to go and install the MCP server at this URL and it does it. That's a pretty dang cool agentic use case. So what did it do? It broke it down, it created a directory in my documents, Klein, MCP, which, okay, is doing the things. So it's adding this repo path, okay. Seems fine so far. I mean, the cool thing about model context protocol is it uses servers. I saw people complaining, oh, that's, you know, blah, 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 it has these downsides, whatever. But the positive side is it's just a standard interface, you know, making HTTP calls. You could have a backend, you know, written in anything. So it verified that it could use the server's capabilities before saying it's done. That's the super cool thing about agents in general when it comes to coding is they verify their own stuff. You don't have to be the, the dungeon troll verifying that the stuff worked. It does it for you. That part is cool. I will say, if you've been to like Bolt or Lovable, let's just go here. Let's go to Lovable because they have this beautiful builder integration to import from Figma. It is awesome. You should use it. But anyway, if we go in here and say, actually, I have this sort of like CRM app that I actually imported from Figma and note that it is actually responsive. I don't know if you've tried any other Figma imports, but they're not responsive. This is actually responsive. Anyway, this has the Superbase integration. That is so cool. This thing, if you connect with Superbase, then you can build out applications with full on auth and databases and backend and full stack functionality without leaving the lovable chat. I think that's the promise of MCP is you stay in your cursor chat, your client chat, your lovable chat, your whatever chat, your builder.io chat, and all the tools you need. It can read, it can look at the schemas of your database tables, it can create tables, it can do anything that it needs as awareness of things that the AI itself would normally not have awareness, create the standard protocol, a clean set of inputs and outputs with schemas and everything. That's the dream. And that's exciting. Now, the weird thing is, you know, I've heard so much hype about MCP and I'm like, I'll just stream about MCP and it'll be obvious why I want it and what I want to use. And I'll be honest right now, it is so not obvious what I want to do or like why I need this. Let's try to do something useful. So search seems cool. Give me something useful that's like free. Let's do Brave Search. I was always just curious about this one. I'll go get a Brave API key if I don't have one already. Okay, here's my key client. Oh, okay. We've got an MCP server up. Approve. Great. Don't flash my API key on this screen, please. Even though I just gave it to a chat box to some open source thing to some API to whatever. Cool. Approve. Oh, yeah. Let's auto approve these things. That's fun. Okay. We got somewhere, everybody. We got, okay, somebody recommend Brave Search. Perfect. Let's start a new task. We added Brave MCP server. Our agent can search the web. Let's try. Search the web for what is builder.io. Let's try this again. What is builder.io? It's probably going to be wrong, too. Our phone out there. Company platform, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Oh, wait. Is this? Yeah, I did. Let's auto approve these. I like their auto approve. So, Cursor's auto approve is called YOLO mode. Fun name, terrible idea for a name, in my opinion. Okay, so visual editing, design of code, enterprise CMS. Yeah, cool. Visual AI stuff. Awesome. Okay, now let's use this for something. So let's actually like use this for something useful. So I wonder if it's going to be smart enough. Okay, let's do this. This is a real use case I have from time to time is I just forget stuff. So as a side note, I have, I mentioned, I have the ChatGPT app here installed. I find the App integrations sound awesome, but highly disappointing. That's probably why they're not making a big deal of it right now. But I have this habit with ChatGPT that I've trained myself to do. I just, I turn on web search every time, no matter what. Why? Because ChatGPT lies so damn much. It just lies so much. And I can't, I cannot be a productive human when I get lied to so much. 
But like, you know, if, if you've got a friend who lies to you one out of every 10 things they say, I'm going to have to fact check them on everything. But luckily for us, lying friends don't have a search the web button where we can ensure that they validate all information all the time. Will it be smart enough to search for things that I need? So here's an example. Sometimes I go to ChatGPT. I really want to just be sure it searches the web. And I know Cursor has at web built in. And so like this whole Brave search was a lot of hurdles for nothing. Cursor just can do at web. But it doesn't do at web automatically from what I understand. Have I ever seen it just search the web without me telling it to? I don't believe so. And so sometimes I'm looking for something like really recent. Like here's an example, Tailwind 4. Let's do how do I do container queries in Tailwind 4. Tailwind 4 is pretty new. It's probably newer than whatever this model is. Is it automatically searching the web? No, it's telling me I don't have it. It's fine. I'm not, hold on. Let's switch the mode here. Plan. Let's go to plan mode. I'm just trying to ask a question. It's so funny how it refers to the user. Okay, plan. How do I do container queries in Tailwind 4? I need to, it's so funny to see the narration. Um, so it knows how to do container queries in Tailwind, which is just awesome, by the way. Maybe these are non-obvious queries to do a web search. Let's try something else. I mean, obviously I could say, what is today's top news stories? I'm assuming it's going to do a web search automatically. Let's see. That's cool. Why did you search twice? I don't know. Now it's big, beautiful, and green. Okay. Now, I mean, I guess, so sure. I guess you could say like, add to my homepage today's top news stories. Hard code the list. As you can see, I'm still reaching for a use case. It makes sense. I, someone tell me a use case for MCP. That's, that's like really awesome. This is doing what I expected. It is giving me news stories hard coded into this application. Like great, fun. I hate political news, especially these days. Enjoyable. Great. Let me use the browser action tool to open the website and see how this news section looks. Okay. Yeah. Great. I mean, it's ugly, but I mean, it's not horrible. It's just not my style. But that's fine. That's great. That's cool. That's just a cool example of like what, what Klein can do. Now, I'm not finding it to be smart and just automatically doing web searches unless I'm pretty obvious that I want to web search. Okay, chat. Like we really want to find one entity per server. That's interesting. Let's go over to what came out of the box. Memory sounds kind of interesting. Let's do memory because memory is not something that Cursor has built in. Create, create relations, add observations, delete. That's cool. Okay, so let's do this one. Let's try and hook up to cursor proper memory. Let's go to cursor and let's do it the cursor way. Okay, MCP, add new MCP server. Great, command to run. I don't know, I'm already confused. What? SSE, let's go to the docs. The MCP file uses JSON, okay, great. Project, okay, let's do that. Cursor mcp.json. This is a lot more work than Klein, but let's just start there. Okay, bam, okay, cursor mcp.json. And I saw some JSON looking stuff over here. NPX, okay, sure. Memory, NPX, cool, great. Okay, so do I, do I do that? Okay, so I added memory command, okay. Can I just, oh, okay. So I added the JSON and I typed the stuff and I got the stuff, great. How do I, init command, great, cool. Okay, I see. So you do the JSON thing and it does the thing. But how do I add this system prompts? Here's example prompt for personalization. Oh, I see. It's saying this could be a good custom. Okay, cool. Let's go um, cursor rules. I cursor rules slash MCP dot MDC. Is that markdown cursor? If you have MDC, it gives you this cool little cute little UI with different boxes. Helpful for remembering stuff for use later. Sure. Okay, save. That was cool. And then, all right, so let's see if we can use this. My name is Steve. Okay. I assume it's not going to just... Oh, let me update my memory with your introduction. Well, it actually did something unexpectedly cool happened. That was fun. I don't know if this is going to be useful to me yet, but let's just test this out. I don't need that. What? What is my name? Let me check the memory. Wow. Interesting. That is maybe cool. I mean, like, I feel like anything the LM needs to remember should really be in cursor rules. So we're trying to think of a use case on why we want memory. But this is cool. We have a memory now and it does do stuff. And let's try something really quickly. Like, does memory just auto trigger if I do, like, let's just update some code. Let's do that same prompt you all have seen before. And like, will it just remember stuff? I don't know. Let's do our prompt again. So let's go over here and say, write me a function that converts down to HTML. So far, my belief is on MCP, 
Now, most of this stuff you can do manually just fine. You know, uh, oh, wait, I don't want that. Ah, cancel. <laughs> Will it remember this? Because this is something Devin was supposed to do. Stop, stop. Um, is if you say, like, here's how I want something. Like, one thing that Devin did that is cool. One time I told it, I can't remember what it was. I remember that. Yeah, it was a weather app, and it generated some weather app stuff. And I was like, no, I want to use, like, an iStyle. And it's like, oh, you want iOS down to save that. That was pretty cool because that is like a human, right? You tell a human some feedback, we write code a certain way, and it may not be documented anywhere, especially if you're a startup like us. So it just saves that, like a human, it saves that memory. So here I'm going to give some feedback and say, don't install any packages. I'll maybe be more extreme. I don't like using NPM packages ever, ever. Do this without, do this from scratch with regexes. Now, will it remember that? Because that's one thing Devin could do. Devin was kind of bad in general, but it did this one time. It was cool. So it didn't remember that. It would have been cool if it remembered that. If it's automatically like, oh, I see you have this preference. I will save that. Yeah. Yeah, the shared memory does seem interesting in general. I wish it would have done that. So that's the tough part. I still don't see a lot of good reasons to use MCP over doing things manually. Here's my guess. If you're doing something a lot over and over in cursor or client or whatever tool you use, and you're constantly copying and pasting from the same source, Google Drive, Postgres database schema, whatever, then an MCP server would streamline that workflow. It would make it a little bit less annoying to have to go back to that source over and over. If you are always copying and pasting from Jira or Slack, you can either create or use a Slack or Jira integration so you don't have to do that manually. That part is pretty cool. Or for instance, like if you are building in a way similar to like Lovable and you're always reading the same super base tables and working with that, creating them, et cetera, you can use an MCP server for that. I use cursor a lot every day. I use, it's built in a cursor, right? I use at web. If I needed to remember something, I put in the cursor rules. The nice part about the cursor rules versus this sort of like mysterious amorphous database is I assume that mysterious amorphous database is unique to me. It's on my local computer. It's our server running there. So it's not shared among the team. At least with cursor rules, I, I'm clear. I know if I saved it in a way that is only to me or I saved it in the repo with the scoping. And so my takeaway so far is MP is cool, but it's not something that like, if you're not using today every day, you're obviously missing out on. That's my sense so far. So that's my take so far, at least. That for me, this is not something that I'm just horribly missing out. I will say... Klein has the smoothest MCP installation of anything I've ever seen. I obviously you saw me struggle with MCP. I'm guessing I'm not the only one, despite that some people rage super hard about it. But I get how in theory it's super cool. It is, I mean, you saw I went a little crazy when I saw the memory thing. Well, it was really, really, really cool to see. I can't still tell you what the use case that makes sense for it is, but that was really exciting to see. And while it wasn't, I think that's a challenge with tool use in general, is if you have so many tools. You know, like, how is the element supposed to know when to use what? And I probably could have. In fact, look, let's, let's try one more thing before I sign off here. Cursor uh, rules. There we go. Uh, memory retrieval, memory. Okay, so let's add some more. If I, if I ever feedback, like, I like things this way or that way, save that feedback. When implementing things, look up feedback first this way as i work with you you can understand my preferences better let's try that really quickly let's see if this let me give some feedback on this markdown dot an obvious critique is don't use so much regexes now i'm going to mess up my mysterious amorphous database with information i don't know how to actually go through and purge later i don't like comments in code remove all comments in the code um okay it's still not remembering that. I did save that rule that says, if I give you feedback, save it. But didn't remember that. It's unfortunate. Maybe I'll be more explicit. Let's go back to what we had. I said, right, if I ever give feedback, I'm gonna tell you, save it. This is attached to all files. Let's try one more. Here is my feedback. Please use Pascal case. All functions. I'm like saying the word feedback. This is my feedback. I told the rules, if I give you feedback, and I said, this is my feedback. I may have to figure something wrong here. So the big challenge I always have, so there's there's two challenges here that I think are actually really, really pronounced. Challenge one is this is configuration based. I used to be so hardcore on the config configuration over code train, but configuration is so annoying. 
so many times I've updated for things and it didn't do what I wanted. I just don't know. There's no feedback. There's no errors. There's no console log. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like what, what is the next step? There isn't one. There's just more guess and check and pray. And the second thing is we're dealing with an LLM, which are fundamentally non-deterministic. You know, LLMs are incredibly powerful, but like we have this challenge when people do, I mean, it's happened to me a live stream. I did a live stream uh, yesterday or the day before. The LLM did some stuff it didn't before. And that's, that happens with Build, it happens with Cursor. People are used to deterministic systems in general, right? That's what we've been raised on forever. It's one, two, three. It always does the same thing every time. And that's that's the big challenges I'm having here with, with the MCP server. I'm sure with more trial and error, you can get some stuff. And I know some people really, really like this. But the configuration, the lack of clarity on if the LLM, like even this, this Cursor rule as a configuration, like, did I do this right? Is it, like, is it even reading this? I don't know. Like, are you... I don't even know how to check cursor and say, like, did you look at this cursor rule? Like, maybe I misspelled dot cursor. You know, I don't know. A lot of potential here. I don't have a killer use case yet. I like seeing it. I think the hype is overblown at the moment, but the theory here is extremely cool. Thank you all. This is my zero to not quite hero <laughs> look at MCP. Hopefully you find this valuable. Hopefully if I save you time because this is not really your gem, like maybe it isn't mine today, then you've saved a little bit of time. If not, if you're like, hey, there's a lot of cool stuff I can do now that I've kind of seen someone do the setup and stuff, I think that hopefully you can find some really cool stuff you can do with it. Until next time, see you, everybody.